Well, I'm driving, so I'm just going to lay my phone down here in the seat, and I'm going to talk while I drive. I don't like to have my phone up. I don't have a um, holder in here because I, I see too many people on videos that try to drive and look at their phone and answer questions, and I just I'm, I don't believe in doing that, but... This morning, I started making a video about a woman who is, who's been missing from the Buchanan County, Virginia area for about uh, uh, two, two and a half years, I guess now, she's been missing. September of 2020, she went missing. When I started out that video, I just started reading a couple of uh, posts that I had found about her because she just came up in my news feed a couple of days ago and I've heard of her story before. I've seen uh, her missing poster on Facebook and stuff, but I had not really read these things or watched these videos about her. When I started making my video, I had no idea about some of the rumors and things that were being talked about. I read from a a Facebook page called Russell County Free Press and basically they were just telling about how she had spent the day with you know her mom and then had gone out with her boyfriend and the next morning uh, a relative had gone to speak with her and she wasn't there and he told that he had let her out of the truck at like 2 30 in the morning and she never returned home then later there was more come out about the possibility that she had been jumped set up and jumped because the some people accusing her of having been a narc or a drug informant a police informant now i don't know about any of that and what i post in my video i'm going to edit before i post it I'm kind of hanging on to it a little bit longer because this this Facebook group are supposed to post some more about this and I'm waiting to see what they post before I put my video on. But the reason I'm talking about this is because when I started reading her story and like I said at the beginning of that video, I'm reading this to the people listening to me the same as right when I'm reading it for the very first time. So nothing of that was included in that first part of that story. And I didn't find that out until I went on ahead and clicked on a couple of YouTube videos to try to see if there was more to it, which there, it turned out that there was more to it. So I don't have all the facts and I don't think really anybody has the facts of this case or they would know where she is, you know, but it just got me thinking about something that I had posted recently about how how these stories connect you to another story. Um, when I started doing a video about another, a different story about a little girl that went missing in, or who rather was found, her remains were found in Georgia, it led me to another story about a little girl who had gone missing in Mississippi who they believed may have been the same child, but it turned out that it wasn't because their ages were so different. And, um, sorry, I had to stop for just a minute for traffic here. But anyway, what I'm getting at is when you start reading about one story, you will find more about other people. For example, I did a story uh, a while back about, um, that the, the title of my video was The Man With No Hands. It was about a man whose remains were found in a barn in uh, the northwestern Kentucky area. His hands had been cut off. He had been shot and murdered execution style from, as though someone had shot him in the back, the back of the head. And um, they never identified him. And, I don't, I can't remember what year that this happened, but as I'm investigating, or 
I, I hate to use that word investigate because I'm not an investigator. I'm not a detective or any kind of professional journalist or anything. I just, I call it investigating when I go digging and looking for more info on, on these people, what I might be able to find. And while I'm trying to find more information about his story, it led me to another missing man who they believed it might have been. Now, I'm sure that they took DNA, and these two men were so similar in height and, and weight, and uh, but I've not heard any updates on that at all. But since this is the last video that I'm going to be posting for the year 2022, I just wanted to say we all can educate ourselves and we can tell our family and friends and loved ones be careful we always say that to people when they're getting ready to leave to go someplace whether they're going on a long drive or a short drive or a long trip we always say be careful we we read posts on facebook daily or at least semi-daily about some woman who had a bad experience in some shopping center parking lot or uh, she felt like someone was following her maybe someone was following her we've been seeing a lot of posts the last couple of years about fentanyl and people finding like stickers or flyers stuck to their uh, car windows and when they go to take it off it's covered in fentanyl i don't know how true these stories are but whether they're true or not, it's a possibility that it's better to err on the side of safety, in my opinion. And we know that restaurants and stuff sometimes will put sticker or like these flyers on people's car windows to invite them to some new restaurant or something like that. And how many of us just grab that and throw it off of our car without thinking or we grab it and we look at it and we want what is this all about um i don't know what to tell people to do in that case maybe carry around a rubber glove or a plastic glove or get a ink pen out of your purse or your pocket or pick up a stick from the ground or whatever to remove it from your car if you fear that for the most part i would think that it's probably just exactly what you think it is a flyer from some restaurant you know but like I said better safe than sorry and I guess it's it's a sad state of life to have to live that way to have to constantly be fearful and worry and look over your shoulder but it's it's fact of life especially for younger people nowadays and I hate to sound like a very old old person when I say that word nowadays but when I was a teenager and a young adult and people even a, probably a, a decade after me we didn't have to worry too much about not being aware of our surroundings because um, we didn't have cell phones we were we didn't have earbuds or pods in our ears we weren't walking around distracted by TikTok or whatever we you know if we were walking through a parking lot and someone approached us we were looking at them you know now younger people are more fearless I think and um, they don't think anything bad will happen to them there was so much fallout and negative feedback about the Jeffrey Dahmer um, show that was on Netflix. But what I think they wanted to show people was just how easy it is to trust the wrong person. And um, I think for the most part that people today, whether you are 10 years old or 80 years old, kind of know better than to just accept a ride from a stranger and sometimes it's not a stranger you know sometimes it's somebody we know and trust more often than not when a person dies 
mysteriously or goes missing, it's usually someone that they knew and trusted. It's like a story I did recently about them finding the body of a woman uh, on the Little Shepherd Trail on Pine Mountain, which is in Harlan County, Kentucky. And um, they found her body years ago. She had not been deceased very long when they found her. A few, few weeks, I think, maybe, maybe a few months. I can't remember now, but it took them until this this past year to find out who she was through the use of DNA. But the Little Shepherd Trail. They believed, investigators believe that she was killed where she was found. They don't believe that she was already dead and then moved there, which we don't know. We don't know. The, the forensics and stuff was so different then than they are now, more advanced. But this is what they believe, that whoever killed her took her there to kill her. So either she knew this person and just thought they were out for a nice drive together, or she didn't know them at all and maybe was kidnapped and taken there. Either way, something led her to be at that location, which is a very um, secluded, and now it's secluded now in the year 2022, but I can only imagine back at that time, I think this took place in the 70s and I can only imagine how secluded it was then you know but just like the case of the woman that I covered from Moorhead, Kentucky the uh, Stella Kid, who you know took money out of her bank account sold her home and supposedly ran off with a new exciting love interest a boyfriend who she had not told any of her family who he was, even though rumors circulated about who he was. He was never charged with anything, and she was never found. And so she, more likely, more than likely, it was this man who caused her death, or at least, you know, her disappearance. Because this was uh, in the 90s, I believe. And so what I'm getting at is I'm just going back over some of the cases that I've talked about this past year. And of course, the biggest one that I talked about and the one that got the most interest and uh, views was The Boy in the Box, which when I made my video, it was only a few short months later that they came out with a definite uh, identity for that child who had been found in um, 1957. And um, these cases are different in the fact that young children like that are more often than not, they are murdered by a parent or if they're kidnapped, if they're taken, they're almost immediately reported missing and neither of these children this little boy the little girl in philadelphia that was found floating in the box um, the little girl in georgia whose remains were found none of those children had that they know of had been reported missing they could not find any matches to any missing children that matched them so it's almost always a parent or grandpa or someone very close to that child because a mom is going to run through the streets searching for her child, you know. They're not going to just say, okay, well, I don't know whatever happened to my child, you know. And that was another case that I have got a video ready to post about was the child that they thought might have been the little girl in Georgia was another little girl who had gone missing in Mississippi only a few short months earlier and they thought it could have been the same child but of course it wasn't because there were differences in their ages and stuff but nobody had well she had actually been reported missing that little girl had 
but there were criminal circumstances leading up to her disappearance. Um, some people think that she's alive and well today and that she had been taken by her own family members to uh, safety to keep her safe from someone who had harmed her and that man had been released from jail that same day. So some people think that he was guilty even though they say he passed a lie detector test. Some people believe that her own family members took her and concealed her away to where um, he could not get to her, you know? So I'm going to do that story. I've got that video ready. I just really have not had a chance to edit and post, but I just want to say thank you to all the subscribers who have followed me and subscribed to my channel this year. And I plan on doing more stories. I've got a few videos ready to upload. And I'm going to get back to my roots and focus on Appalachia, Eastern Kentucky, Southwest Virginia, some of these other locations, some lesser known stories. And I just want to say thanks to everybody for taking the time to listen to my channel. And Happy New Year.